I've always personally had a thing against being recorded. And、mm. I think for the longest of time, I, I've managed to go by without really any footage or pictures of myself. I don't really think of myself as being different or similar to people. For a long time, I struggled with conceiving of other people to be separate entities, so to speak. Basically, one of my sort of biggest fear when it comes to contemplating about how I interact with other people is this fear that I could come off as just horribly fake because. My perceived authenticity, at least perceived from myself,、mm. just comes off as utterly impossible. They probably might think, "How could someone unironically be like that?" <laughs> And if they're sort of ironically acting like that, then there is definitely a component of play acting and insincerity. I mean, it's kind of a humble brag if I were to sort of engage in that sort of victim mindset. Essentially, it's like, oh, look at me! Because I'm so pure, I'm unbelievable. Woo! I mean, <laughs> I try not to victim sort of victimize myself in that sense. Do you paint these? Um, not all of them. Some are by my godfather, but some are by myself. Sure. So I would say the better paintings are his. I don't really paint for any reasons other than sometimes I get bored. Mostly, it's just I made it. It doesn't look that bad because when it looks really bad, I get very ashamed and I throw them away. <laughs>、um, this is from Germany. It's actually my room. I had a plant, and this is just plums. I, I like plums, but the problem with this painting is that I like everything. But the lemon, the lemon looks so flat. It's just sort of there. It doesn't barely looks like a lemon. It's like, is that an apple? Is it a pear? <laughs>、um, and then that one with like a bottle and similar set of a three apple like thing with a less apple like thing. I really didn't like it. <laughs> so that's why I didn't even bother finishing. But it was around the room. So when I was setting this wall up, I just thought, ah,、oh, it's not that bad. I'll just put it up there. But essentially,、um, so that face and that. Bathing lady. That's I, I did that sometimes sophomore year. But everything else is by my godfather. And the only painting that's a painting, sort of in his eyes, would be the one on the left. That is a proper painting. But the other ones I have over there was he was just teaching me how to paint. So he basically, I think he maybe found a Velasquez painting and he took out the canvas and he said, "This is how you do it." So he took out a pen or you know a paintbrush and just laid it out. And I think he painted both of these probably in like. Twenty thirty minutes. It's a fond memory, and quite frankly, even as sort of a sort of sketch work, it's pretty good. This board.、Um, yeah, you want to talk to me about what you have over here with this set? <laughs> well, see, that was when I was kind of going through a breakup. So I was I was thinking a lot. These are just various thoughts that I haven't managed to erase. And I really like one of the quote. It says, "You swallow scorn, but you don't chew it." <laughs> I got it.、Um, I got it from a book by Stenholm. I don't agree with it, but I like the I like the sound of it. It's a funny thought. But here's sort of various things, and <laughs>、um, but I guess this is, some of these are quite revealing about sort of what I went through the past couple months. So here I wrote down:、um, We err when we try to see our virtues as our merits because I was applying to grad school essentially, and yeah, I've always been a pretty decent student. I get by. I think I'm smart enough to do the work demanded of me. But I think precisely because of that, sometimes I lack that sense of diligence or really the drive to sort of one up yourself because you're okay as you are. How are your books organized? Um. So here I have, I think, at least the way I wanted to set it up is that I have this shelf which is mostly philosophy books, and I also sort of put all my books in Chinese over here, which all happen to be. Philosophical to various degrees, and then sort of up there, you have all the literature I really like, and so mostly it's I, I would say continental European literature between like let's say nineteenth and twentieth century. So for example, these are the trilogy of Gunther Grass. <laughs> so my impression of German writers, I think, is mostly informed by. Um, let's say someone like Thomas Mann. I was a big fan of him. I read a lot of his books. I tried to have read most of his major works. I think at this point I've only skipped、um, Joseph and the Three Brothers. But that's sort of my impression of German writers. They're、sort of、very level-headed, 
you know, they could be humorous, they could be at times sentimental, but there's always a sense of clarity throughout their, their text in such a way that you, you find the language really crisp in a somewhat logical way. <laughs> okay, here's what I want to do. Bring those books with you. Bring whatever books you want to talk about with you. Okay. That's great. I love that. I guess so you just told me to kind of put together, you know, some books I might want to talk about. So these are sort of the Gunter Grass, he calls it a Danzig trilogy, I think. And then there's sort of these books of Thomas Mann that kind of, I wouldn't say started everything, but there's, I read them relatively, I think, early on. Then sort of, there's this book that was really fascinating. It was um, by Elias Canetti and this is the only work of, um, let's say, novelistic fiction he ever worked on, but it's a novel of his that I found to be tremendously interesting. And sort of the quote that I wrote down, which I must have been really fond of, was that no mortal man is worth his weight in books. I don't part with them very easily, but it's sort of my volume of Marcel Proust that I sort of, I think it's six or seven volumes, but it's all meant to be one book, essentially. But he's just really known for his stream of consciousness style as well as sort of, I mean, at least that's what people know him for. It's like, oh, In Search of Lost Time, stream of consciousness. It is really quite psychological, this concept of a stream of consciousness. It's sort of recollecting and having really long and somewhat intricate sentence structures just because one's thought, in a sense, never ends. It never begins and it kind of never ends. So that's sort of how I see it. It's a very anthropomorphic stream of consciousness.